time to start. I'm so happy to be here with you. It's Pinavar from my studio. And now I will just try to switch to the top angle and I will talk about the new release, okay? Um, it is not a very big one, but it's really lovely and exciting. Uh, there are some amazing uh, products coming. I'm really excited about them because for uh, some of them I was waiting for quite a long time. We had to work on the formula, so... Uh, to get it right <laughs> and there are some really lovely designs of the uh, stencils and i hope they will be popular because i'm in love personally so um i've got i've got this basket here showing all the things that we are going to uh, have new um in this winter release and some of them are unfortunately unpacked because i had to um, well i had to make some samples but the release is two tissue papers. I'm going to show you. The plan was to make more, but I have to wait a little bit longer. So again, we've got the same quality, beautifully thin tissue paper. I will show you the designs again. Packed in the same kind of packaging. Again, six of the uh, sheets in one. So this is going to be something that uh, you can use for your collage or for your journaling or for your home decor. Then... We are going to have two journals, and I'm going to show you them unpacked, of course. There is a bigger and a smaller one, and they're really exciting. I will tell you why in a moment. Then they are eight stencils, eight stencils, and they are all amazing. And finally, they are six waxes. But these boxes are absolutely special. They are completely new things that you haven't seen before on the market. Something that we were working on for some uh, longer time to make the formula right. So they are coming in a moment. So first of all, let's have a look at the tissue papers. Because tissue papers will be probably the, uh, the quickest to show you. And I've got some sample here waiting on the side. There are two designs, both of them very romantic. Let me show you the first one. This is uh, very big. You can see already there will be uh, lovely images you can use for the bigger canvas or for the cover of your book. This is uh, called Notes and it's filled with handwriting text. Here on the bottom and on the top, and there are some faces of the ladies. There are different sizes of them. You can totally use them as a main character on the canvas. And there is some text. There is text in Irish language. There is text in French, in English. And I am pretty sure there is something in other languages as well. So there is something for everybody. And tissue papers are so versatile. Uh, but they are not new. This is not really something that I have to demo because we have a lot of tutorials showing how you can use these. So I will just show you the designs and I will show you something more interesting instead. Okay, for example, we'll try the new designs of stencils. The second one, it's called Romantica. And it's totally inspired with the cabinet cards. So you can see there are lovely cute angels then they are the images you can find on the other side of the cabinet cards or the old photos but also something that would be in French and this is all about perfume and again photography so they're again very international there is Poland there is in fact a uh, nice touch uh, Mr. Januszkiewicz, who was the <laughs> photographer in Warsaw. And there is one from uh, Hungary. And, you know, these all nice details. They are beautiful backgrounds you can use, but also a lot of paper for cutting to make something really nicely uh, decorated. So you can just rip the paper, you can cut the paper, and, in fact... What you can do, you can create background for the project like this. So if, if you have a closer look, 
here in the background, I've used the tissue paper. And this tissue paper was the one from the Noted um, design, the first one I was showing you. And this is a combination of everything I have in my release in one hand. So this is a journal together with stencils, new waxes, and uh, the tissue papers. So let's have a look at the journals. I told you there are two journals, and they're in two sizes, but also there is different paper inside. The one you can see here, it's super cute. And the best thing about this one, it fits perfectly into my Art Daily cover. So if you want to put it inside, and what I usually do, I go like this and like this, and I have it all taken with me. It fits perfectly. This is just the right size to have another journal uh, to work with. It's add-on to our Art Daily line, and uh, if you will have a closer look, it has 24 white pages, lovely thick paper. You can see this is uh, quality of the watercolor paper. Then it is with the elastic, which is going to help us close <laughs> once it is getting too thick. And of course, uh, this is great quality cheapboard cover with the pockets, right? There's pocket in the front and there is pocket on the back. So what I wanted to do is to create the journal that may be great add-on, but it may also work as a journal by itself. So you can just use it together uh, with the cover, or you can take it as it is. Uh, if you look inside, there's a lot of paper to work on, probably too much for me, so I'll have to take some of these outside, right? Because my, <laughs> my journal pages are dimensional. This is my problem, and uh, most of the times I just have to take them out. So, you know, you, you can use them for future projects, or you can just close it with your elastic band. It's a kind of convenient closing and nice quality. I love the quality of the keyboard. Prima has the best keyboard covers, really. They are so sturdy, you can work on them right away. So you don't have to worry that um, you need any special protection for them. You can just work directly with your mixed media on the top of this keyboard cover. So this is cover number one. And you can see white paper inside, great and thick, right? The second journal, and second journal is super cute. It is smaller, it is square, and to be precise, this is five and a half by five and a half, which is, of course, in inches, I uh, can don't give me, uh, probably 12, so uh, 13, 14 centimeters. So uh, this one has brown paper in it. So let me show you the color of the paper. It's lovely craft paper inside. And of course, the same uh, solution. We have pockets and we've got very thick chipboard covers, elastic closing. And uh, I already started making the pages inside. This is the sample I'm going to take with me to Frankfurt for the demo. And this is the cover uh, color um, with the popular uh, kind of wire that you can use with the um, bind it all machine or change machine if you need to add extra pages. But again, you can see uh, my pages are very dimensional. So closing with elastic is kind of a great solution. I've got these, right? And I started working on more samples to show you the stencils and to show you um, the waxes. First of all, the stencils. I will, because the demo of the wax is the longest, I'm going to do it as a last thing. Uh, I said we've got eight designs of the stencils and all of them are inspired by the things I love. So I will just show you one by one. And I made... Uh, swatches as well so you can see them in real life I also have extra paper so you can see how nicely they work so let's start with uh, something uh, oriental and this is the uh, stencil, stencil with the big holes 
And I will just uh, uh, ask Kasia to put the names and the numbers of them in the uh, comments so you can find exact number for the future. This one has quite big design, so you can go with uh, more textures and uh, you can easily use it with the papers and uh, with the chipboards or canvases and some more gritty paste as well. And this one, I have it here, is this kind of design after application. Uh, just to show you what I was using, this is icing paste, and icing paste is one of the best solutions for the intricate designs in the stencils. So um, I will just ask my husband for help. So you can see how they look in real life. I will just demo in a moment as well. Next one, obviously inspired by the vintage decors. Uh, and these are the ones that I found on the edges of an old uh, book. You can see they look like this. They're called laurels, laurels, and they are very <laughs> classical design. You can continue that for a long time to make some kind of a framing or just design that is going to be a nice element in the background. I will show you designs in a moment as well. Uh, there is something for people who like the notes, like the notes. And this is a uh, handwriting, very intricate. So I suggest using something more delicate like icing paste or gel medium or modeling paste, not really gritty stuff. And this handwriting uh, is taken from one of the postcards or one of the papers I bought somewhere on the free market. So this is an authentic handwriting of some uh, person. So this is not like... Uh, font that I found online. This is something it's really existing. And of course I had to make it work So as a stencil, so it's slightly altered. And that would be perfect background for some of the uh, designs. So just to show you, I have this one here on the top. Probably you can't really see too much because it is very delicate. And uh, this is going to be here in the background. Hopefully you can see it. Well, maybe not. Just to compare, these are the laurels. The laurels, the ones that I was showing you a moment ago. Yeah. And the one with the, um, the first design I was showing you, which are oriental wall. Here's the oriental wall, wall behind this gentleman. Oriental wall but it's orientated this way, just to make you a little bit more confused. <laughs> okay, so I really used modeling paste only for these samples in the journal. I wanted a very subtle effect and uh, that's why it's semi-transparent. I made the swatches very visible so there will be no confusion, okay? So next one. Next one is a design that I called Mind Games. It's a combination of the, the checkered pattern and the font. So this is really cool. And it's quite big as well. So this is something for the bigger projects or something that uh, may work when you want to make a real statement or something really visible. In fact, I use it in the background of this uh, journal. You can see some details here. It's a combination of an old text and very big a nice checked pattern. There were checked patterns before, but they were very delicate. And this one is really chunky and really big, which I was missing. That's why I had to make it. I hope you are as excited as I am. <laughs> and um, next one, when once we are talking about the text, Gothic. This is uh, something which I wanted to make. We'll have a similar kind of concept before. We had Celtic uh, text that was called Manuscript. It was taken from an old book. This is an old book as well, but um, this font is Gothic font. So this is different kind of the lettering. And I have to tell you, it works really, really beautifully. It's amazing. I have a sample as well. 
I can see this one in the background thanks to this gentleman here but also this is exactly the same one I used on the cover of the book yeah that is uh, gothic and gothic is um, also quite delicate so I would probably not use sand paste through that just more delicate uh, products such as icing paste, gel medium, modeling paste, so you won't clog your letters by accident. That's the problem with the very intricate stencils when you have them in front of you uh, and uh, you make decisions about the designs. You have to look at um, the sizes. If it's going to be something bigger like this, right? This is uh, uh, called, um, hmm, let me check, vintage wallpaper. And vintage wallpaper, oh, sorry, it's on the other side. Oh, it's quite big, right? It's not a problem to use sand paste here. And uh, this is the result with the icing paste that is uh, here, right? So you can also easily use something that would be gritty, which I would not recommend with the delicate ones. Then something for people who love lace. This is a lacy pattern, which is called uh, Floral Net. It's really hard to come with the names. You can see the result here, right? Very, very nice uh, effects. Very um, intricate as well, but big enough to use texture pastes, including some kind of sand in it or a graphite paste, sand paste, any kind of paper paste, of course, they are going to give you amazing result. And the last one, one of my favorites again, dandelions. And of course, clearly again, inspired by the wallpaper design. And this is the one that uh, looks like this here. You can see the result with the icing paste. I was trying to make it up front so you can see how they look like. And just to show you the dandelions in real life, <laughs> here is that design used as a background of the journal page. And again, I decided to go for a very subtle effect just to compare to the striking colors. The result is equally beautiful. So this is something inspired by the wallpapers. And I really like wallpaper design. So, you know, this is not a surprise. I use quite a lot of these. Just to show you in my sampler I'm taking with me, this page also has the dandelions in the background. And this one has the floral net. So the floral net is here, right? So let me show you how they work. And that should not be a surprise. <laughs> I'm just going to do a very quick demo of some of them. Which one do you want to see? Which one do you want to see in action? Tell me, because I, it's not really, I think, that important to show you all of them. But if you have your favorite you want to see, <laughs> I can quickly just show you how you nicely spread Dandelions. Okay, let's take dandelions. One more. Maybe you would like, oh, maybe this one because it is really amazing. Mind game. And gothic. Dan gothic. Okay, let's take these ones to start. Okay, so maybe this is the most the biggest one. So let's start with the biggest one. I have a piece of scrapbooking paper, maybe something more visible. And let's take icing paste, the same, uh, the same product I was using really for the stenciling. There are many good solutions. This one is one of the simplest, right? So I just spread it, keep it flat. Sorry. <laughs> Trying to make it nice and even, removing the excess, and ready. So you can see it works just perfectly. Okay, so this was the uh, mind games. 
It's the most chunky of them all. They were requests for the gothic one. <laughs> and that is uh, the one that has more delicate effect. So just quickly, let's go through the stencil. And you can see I don't really put a lot. I just try to push the product through the letters. I lift it up. And how cool this effect is. Right? Dun -dun. Then the next one we wanted to try. Uh, you wanted to see the script. Maybe I can find another color of the... Maybe let's try with the red color now, or purple. Red icing paste is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. So you can see these letters are really intricate. So mm, let's take this part here. Not too much because it's quite thin. I intentionally pick uh, bold colors so you can see easily. If I do white on white, it's not going to be so visible. That's why I try to pick red or blue or purple. Details are just amazing. How cool is this? Okay, there was a quest for the dandelions. Dandelions. Oh, pff, sorry. <sighs> oh, here's a bit of the flat color. Ta -dum, ta -dum, ta -dum. So, as you can see, I'm using my silicone brush and just spreading the product through it. That is dandelion. I mean, I will try to show you maybe one more and we will going to switch to something else. We're going to do short demo of the waxes because they are probably the most mysterious ones. So maybe let's do the, this one. Somebody wanted to see oriental design. Uh, let's try that one as well. This is more flimsy when it comes to handling it because there's a lot of spaces so once you are going to place it on the top of the paper or canvas make sure everything is flat okay and then the same story spreading trying to make it as even as possible come on <laughs> I have short nails. And here it is. Okay, so guys, you can see I was busy. <laughs> I was making these designs for you. And these ones are all inspired by the things I like personally. So it is in fact true that I am making the designs for myself. So I make the things that make me happy. And of course, the uh, wallpapers, old manuscripts, text. These are the designs are making my heart sing because these are the things that I collect. And once you see the designs, they are inspired by things that I have at home or I've seen somewhere and I took photos of them. This is the way I usually work with my uh, designing. I try to be inspired by the things that I like and this is how it works. So here I will show you all designs together. Right? Eight. Eight designs of the stencils and the quality is the same as the previous one. So if you have Prima stencils, if you had them in your hands, you would know that they are very thick uh, great quality plastic and they are easy to take care of and they do the job perfectly. So uh, we didn't change anything. Everything is 
the same except new designs, of course. And now looking at the samples here, it's time to show you the new waxes. And I think here I have to talk a little bit more about them because this is the product we didn't have before. So it's good to understand what they are doing in fact. I've got waxes here and they are something new. Well, the packaging is similar, but it's matte wax, which means uh, they are not shiny at all. They're opaque. They are um, they're meant to be antiquing effects. Something that is going to add color or the imitation of the rust or the dirt or the grease from the machinery on your project. There's also white option. Oh, yeah. There is also white option, something that is going to make your effects, um, your finishing whiter, uh, more delicate, more pearly, more shabby. And I made samples. But first, let me just tell you the base of the product is the same thing. It's the wax. But as you can see, um, consistency is similar, but the finish is completely different. We were working on this for a long time. And we found some difficulties to make the colors and we wanted to make the effects the way we wanted. So it was taking a little bit longer than I expected. And you can see I was inspired by the colors of the grungy color palette, such as rusty browns, reds, some charcoal black, which would be great for adding this kind of dirty feeling to the project. And I wanted to do a little bit of the patina, like copper patina. And um, that's why we've got the blue and the green. And I was sure somebody would like to experiment with the white as well. That's why we have the white. This is the very first uh, attempt to make this kind of product. And I hope you will love it as much as I do. And what can you do with that? First of all, let me show you the colors on the project. I made some mini canvases to show you how they work. So starting with charcoal, you can see this color, it's kind of like a darker uh, shadow that you can apply around. And I will show you how you can do it very easily. So this is going to give you this kind of black gray feeling to it. Then we've got white, of course. White is uh, white and you can see I put it on the top of the metallic colors and it is not super covering so if you want to get better coverage you may need to apply it two times you know white is not really going to be that easy to uh, make it super super strong so keep that on in your mind then colors of patina so the green patina and the blue patina they are of course as you can expect great ones to create effects of patination so in fact if you uh, if you ha uh, had the uh, sorry patina paste in your hands before that will be similar finishing but completely different animal when it comes to the application and consistency because it's something between waxes and patina Right? So the application of the waxes, the finishing of the waxes, the feeling, the smell of the waxes, but uh, smooth <laughs> and still having this nice effect of the patinated colors. Okay. Finally, we've got colors which are dirty brown and rusty red. So something that you can see so this is on the metallic you can see how dark this like it's almost like you know this kind of grease that you put on the machinery that is going to make it work smoothly right so this is one of the browns and then here on this canvas i was putting these two waxes together and then removed a little bit of that to create the look as you can see it is absolutely amazing and <laughs> what can you do with these? You can surely use them as you can see them here to make the antiquing effect, right? Antiquing effect in combination with acrylic paints, with gesso, or with uh, metallic waxes, of course, because once they are 
uh, applied they are permanent so for example you can start with the metallic wax and then combine it with this one or finish on the top let me show you that effect here i add a tiny bit of the metallic on the top of my rusty and brown because i wanted to create the feeling that these are in fact real metal okay so that is uh, one of the options uh, you can just use them for waxing everything and then you can use the metallics on the top right so that will be kind of combination instead of using paint you can use these waxes and uh, of course when it comes to application they are the ways <laughs> yes this the, the smell is just the same we are trying to follow the same smell because people like it so much we use the same fragrance i can't promise it's going to be exactly the same smell because the formula of the product is a little bit different but it's going to be as close as we could make it so in fact what is inside it's a combination of the wax and some matte pigments so they are going to stain your fingers a little bit sometimes so if you want to be uh, more careful i would suggest uh, the application with the brush and now I will just show you how they look on white and the black surfaces. So yes, we were trying to keep the smell. So I have black and white. So let's see. Uh, white on white probably wouldn't be too... Yeah, it's not going to be too dramatic. But you can see on the black, this is completely matte finish. Yeah, something that you can add on the top of your project remember waxes are going to be more like finishing touches project uh, products it's still greasy so it's not going to be easy to paint on the top this is not the right solution you apply them as a last step looking at the charcoal black it's going to be gray very dark gray yeah you can see that's so exciting. Then we've got rust. Well, rust, I have to be considered very fresh, so I have to be careful. Rusty. Red. So they are covering more or less the same way of on both surfaces because they're matte and opaque finish. And let's go with the next ones. Brown. Here we go. And the blue and green. You can see brown is staining my finger. Huh? Just be aware of that. That may happen. So if you don't like that, use the tools. Blue. And finally, the green. So here we go, the waxes. <sighs> so uh, let's have a look at the samples. This is really a combination of what we loved in the rust paste, so the color palette and the finishes that could give us some grungy touches or the patina with these lovely greens and blues, but in the wax formula that people love and uh, they just love playing with that. So I was thinking this would be the best uh, option to um, try and something that will give us so many more possibilities when working with waxes on the dimensional textured project. Because now instead of just having the um, metallic finish, we've got combination of the dirty earthy uh, colors and some patinated as well and of course the white and uh, we can imitate the leather the wood uh, crumbling effects of different kinds colorful walls so it is all opening a lot of possibilities and i'm going to take this little canvas and if you're going to stay with me i'm just going to add some colors to it so for a good start let's go with a little bit of the background color just to explain what i did here 
Uh, yes, of course, they're permanent. They are dry. When they are dry, they are waxes, so they're going to be waterproof. And uh, these are going to be finishing touches. They're water resistant. So this is going to be hmm, something that is probably going to be the most exciting product of the year for me. <laughs> I really want to play with them. So let, let's start. Let's add some color. And I first added a bit of stenciling with the gothic text. I used modeling paste, then I glued elements I made from the molds. And uh, I would like to make some, let's say, earthy colors. So we were going to create something like this. Okay. So just to make it a little bit more spicy, I will start with the brush and a bit of liquid acrylic to give it some background color so it's not going to be all flat completely. Okay, some pink, some purple. These are the liquid acrylics from our previous release from last year. They are amazing to work with the colors because on the surfaces uh, we mostly use in mixed media, so on canvas paper, after drying, they are permanent, just like any other acrylic paint. So you can use them to create permanent dripping effects. Maybe some brown. Okay. No, oh, that's orange. Here's the brown. Oh. I took, again, I took too much. So I'm just going to add a bit of color here and there. Maybe some purple, maybe some of these. Yeah, I know it looks dramatic, but then we are going to take the water. If I will find my water sprayer. I have no sprayer, so I'm starting with the brush. The sprayer is coming. That's good thing to have an assistant. Okay, so some dripping colors just to make it a little bit nicer. I will do a tiny bit more on the top with the purples and browns. So there's something happening in the background. It's just not wax. I like to combine it with these nice drips. I need more of this pink on the other side, I guess. Okay, so this is step one. We have some background color. Quite cool. I will just dry it and then you are going to add finishing touches with the matte wax. Okay. So liquid acrylics are done. This is just to match the colors I want to use. So we are going to use the Rusty red, rusty brown, and the charcoal. Now I will just dry it for you. We have the first background ready. I'll just try to pick it up so we don't have to wait. Of course, I always put too much water and then I have to wait. <laughs> so this is like the very beginning of it. And I will use the mat because I always make it so dirty. So now we can push our waxes in the deeper parts of our uh, background and then try to maybe wrap over the excess or even play with the metallic waxes to highlight something on the top if you want to. So I will take one of the brushes. I have my wax brushes here, for example, this one. Hmm? And let's say, let's start with the browns. You can see the same thing. It's good to have it on the brush, but not too much. You can go on your hand as I usually do. And then you push it in the places you would like to keep it. Then you can take another color, for example, the reds. And then you have a few minutes of the working time, not too long, when you can wrap off the excess. If you would like to get the look of the whiter top, you can now take some kind of a baby wipe 
or some kind of a cloth and you can rub off it from the tops. You can see what I'm doing? Absolutely not. Oh, here. <laughs> I'm rubbing that off in some parts to reveal the details. You have uh, two, three minutes after application of the waxes when you can still remove them like this. So don't wax everything. Try to go section by section. This way it's going to be quite cool. Right? Really easy. Now, let's continue. I'm taking more of the brown. Maybe some of the black. Trying to put it in the position when the comments are not sh covering everything. Okay. Again, maybe a little bit of red. This really works like an antiquing paste. It's adding this aging effect. So again, I'm taking the baby wipe, right? And I can brush it off from the tops. Just look on the cheek of the, <laughs> of the uh, moon, what is happening. Or the tops of the star, right? Really cool antiquing effect. This is something that is um, not really possible to get with the metallic waxes because we don't really have this dirty feel in them. They are all clean and shiny. Here we are playing with completely different look, which is going to give you great background possibilities. So uh, I really encourage you to combine the uh, matte waxes together with the shiny metallic waxes because you may be really in love with the effects you are able to get this way. So just to rub it off again from the selected parts. Even without any metallic, it's already cool, right? It's like instant dirty effect you can rub into, into your project. Something that you can make in uh, just really few minutes. The good um, advice for me would be if you are working on the slippery surfaces such as uh, resin or plastic, don't forget to use your gesso. Really, if you want to have better coverage, no matter if you're playing with the full covering or if you want to get the dirty effect like I'm doing now, gesso is going to be your friend because then it's going to be easier to cover and uh, you can m control the uh, project a little bit better. So you can see I'm just rubbing off the excess when I can. And ready. Like, this is like annoying two white spots, right? So I will get my very old brush. You can see this is probably the oldest brush I've got. Oh, poor thing, right? Oh, almost dead. And I will just add this gray, dark, in the bottom parts of the project as well. Mm -hmm. So look at the faces of that. This is something we made, um, especially per my request. I was trying to get it all done uh, for quite a long time. We were fighting to get the best coverage, the best pigmentation, and that's why we had to wait for quite a long time. This is the unique formula. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of the people in the lab who were uh, very patient and they uh, let me uh, experiment for a long time and be very picky as well. And finally, we got the antiquing matte waxes, something we didn't have before. So this is absolutely new product. And just to give you maybe an idea how it's going to be, if we are going to put it together with the shiny wax, we can, you can now maybe highlight some of the metallic parts as well if you want to. Just using my finger now. See? All together. So if you are planning to work with the um, two layers of wax, Remember that one layer should be going with the brush into deeper parts, no matter if it's going to be the matte one or the shiny one. And the second part, you're only touching the tops, like I'm doing now 
with my finger. So you can see both effects on the same surface. The same fun is with the stencils. If you want to highlight, you can just take a little bit on your finger and then touch the tops, right? So it is really super easy to use, right? Very easy. You've got options. You can go for uh, very earthy natural colors and then add this natural grunginess to the projects. Or you can play with the colors that are more bright, but still they uh, happen in nature when it comes to the grunginess. This is the blue one, just to remind you. This is acrylic paint, one of my uh, acrylic paints. Uh, from Art Alchemy Metallic Collection. I think that was brass hardware. And then I just added the blue on the top. That's it. <laughs> and then I rub off uh, the excess the same way I was showing you. I was rubbing with the baby wipe. This is probably the most useful tool I've got on my table. And then just to compare the green one. Of course, you can use them together. This is kind of similar technique, but instead of using two colors of waxes, I use just one on the metallic and how cool it is. And it's so instant, right? So that would be uh, the release we've got. So two tissue papers, two journals, eight stencils, and six, six, six unique, wonderful, um, antiquing matte waxes something that we never had before and i hope you're going to be excited about them i know there's maybe not a lot of products but they are really really special so um if you want to see the demo live if you're coming to frankfurt show next week um i'm going to be there and i'm going to show you this demo in person, I'm going to show the waxes, I'm going to talk about them, I'm going to explain the differences between metallic wax and antiquing wax, and of course I'm going to show the stencils. So this is all going to be perfect. If you would like to take uh, some photos, if you would like to take some videos, of course you can. And of course you should expect more of the project inspired by the new product like this one. This is all in one. Journal, tissue paper, stencil and the waxes. I hope uh, you're going to like it. Stay tuned because tomorrow we are going to show the uh, um, first examples of the projects with these products. And my design team members Katya and Alexandra, they were already playing with some of these waxes and the stencils and they made amazing projects. So I'm sure you're going to be inspired. And starting from now, we can finally uh, start showing you the uh, unique look of the new product. So please uh, check our Instagram, Prima website, uh, our uh, Facebook, and every, every other social media, for example, finavar.com. Everything will be shown to you this moment. So uh, I'm so happy to he have you here. I hope that you are going to uh, try the new waxes and the uh, new designs of the stencils and let me know what you think about them. It is um, my another very special baby. So I hope um, to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. So guys, that was it. I hope it wasn't too long. And if you can share this video with your friends who may be interested in watching that. Of course, it's going to be recorded and um, well, I will try to upload that to YouTube as well. I hope uh, they are going to seal your hearts as, uh, as I expected. But honestly, this is something I really, really want to play with myself. So thank you so much for watching. And stay tuned for more of the beautiful projects coming. Thank you for being here. All the beautiful support. I know at the moment in Creativation, they are just starting. So, you know, it's going to be really exciting weekend for all of us. I'm sure uh, 
the demos will be there as well. I know Karen is going to, my brand ambassador Karen is going to do some demos of these products so uh, you can see them in real life. So guys, thank you. It was Finovar from my studio and I'll be here trying to answer the questions if you have any. <sighs> this was a lot of talking. Thank you, thank you and uh, love you all. <laughs>